The international break is finally bloody over. I hate that period of the season. It takes so long and I have to watch England play under the plonk of a manager that is Gareth Southgate. But I'm not going to bore you with that today because I've been talking about Gareth Southgate in my last two or three videos, to be honest, over this international break. So we're going to try and move on from the depression that is a looming World Cup that is just doomed to fail because of a manager but anyway Chelsea are back that's the important thing international breaks are always boring because you don't get to see your beloved club play every single week but we're going to go through a list of players today who could make an impact in Graham Potter's side after this international break some of them have had good performances for their country some of them I just think will be interesting players and some of them have actually stayed behind with Chelsea and been training under Potter like some of the academy players and I think they could make an impact so very quickly before we go into this list please make sure to like the video if you're happy that the international break is over and Chelsea Chelsea are finally back and make sure to comment who you think is going to be making the biggest impact for Graham Potter's side after the national break and obviously as always make sure to subscribe as we try and get closer and closer towards 2,000 subscribers but without further ado let's get into the video. So as always the best place to start is from the back. But by the back, I don't mean the goalkeeper, and I actually mean from the back of the international break, from the beginning of the international break, because the Saturday of the international break, when it just started, Chelsea played an in-house game, because our game was postponed, of course, I believe against Liverpool, we did an in-house game against Brighton at Brighton Stadium. And the important things to pick up from that game for me were that, well, firstly, we'll talk about a player who managed to score a brace in the second half later in the video, so make sure to stay about for that. I'm sure you know which player I'm talking about. But two players that played in very interesting positions during that game, there's Loftus-Cheek and Trevor Chalaber. Now, they also happen to have not gone into national duty, meaning that they have trained under Graham Potter for about the last three or four days because they did get some days off, meaning that they had much more focused training with Graham Potter during the national break. So, in this in-house game, reports have stated that Chalaber actually played as a six in this game, as a defence midfielder, a position that Chelsea do definitely need to fill. And a lot of fans have been clamouring for Chalaba to at least be given a chance in this role. So it's very good to see him play in this role. Maybe it's something we'll see develop further. And another player, just before I get into it, in terms of Graham Potter, is Loftus-Cheek played as a right back, a pure right back. We saw him play as a right wing back under Thomas Tuchel, but this time he played as a pure right back in a four. So what does this tell us? This tells us something that we knew before Graham Potter came in, that he likes to mix and match players, throw them in weird positions that you never thought they could play in before. I mean, lots of shooter right back is pretty unheard of. Chalaba did play as a six in his academy days and even at Lorient at times. So it's good to see him being thrown back into that position because as I said, it's a position that Chelsea need to fill. So I'm all for us trying these positions in different games, even in big games that aren't behind closed doors. Now I do have reservations over Chalaba's passing, whether it can fit a DM role, but as a destroyer, we all know how good he is with a tackle. He's very mobile with his height. And lots of shooters right back, you know, I'm not going to make any judgments because I really do need to see that first. I'm not sure his defensive awareness is really good enough for a right back, but it'll be interesting to see how those positions and those players filter through after the national break. Now we're going to go into two players that have been training with Graham Potter over the last four days from the academy that have had a chance to impress. One of them that joined was Charlie Webster. I talk about him a lot. I like to dub him the Cobham Kovacic. I think he's got technical elegance. He's a box-to-box -box midfielder, but can play as a six in the double pivot. I really think he's got it all in this game. He's excellent going forward, excellent dribbler, excellent passer, and great vision, great technical ability, which is something, for some reason, a lot of people who don't like Cobham say Cobham lacks. But, but you can't make it up about Charlie Webster. He's absolutely phenomenal. And he has been training with Graham Potter during this international break. So hopefully, Potter achieves something he likes because as we're going to go through these other two players at Brighton and past clubs, Graham Potter has been known to throw in youth players from the under-21s randomly into squads and integrate them very quickly, which is something that Todd Bowley really wanted when he was picking this long-term manager after Thomas Tuchel. So hopefully, Charlie Webster is just an example of that, and hopefully he signs that new contract very soon. I'm trying to get information on that, by the way, as soon as possible. Another player that trained with the first team during the national break was Dion Rankin. Now he is a really pacey electric right wing back similar to Tarek Lamptey which is why I think he could actually impress Graham Potter. He's been very consistent for the under 21s for the last year and a half to be honest and he's really continued this season actually playing a left winger role at times but right wing back is his main role. He has been training with the first team and once again I do think there's a chance that Graham Potter likes what he sees but I guess we'll just have to see that play out and Damari Hutchinson is the last player we're going to go into. He obviously came in from Arsenal this summer and he has been absolutely exceptional 
for the under 21s this season. I mean, he should be treated like Chukwemeka. As I've said in the video before, he's way too good for the PL2. He proved it last year at Arsenal, and he was trying to find a low move this summer, but unfortunately, nothing materialized. And at Reading, it broke down last minute. So he has been stuck with the under 21s, but for me, he needs to be fully integrated into the first team, training with the first team every single day because he's way too good for that level. I think he's already racked up huge goals and assists. He scored two goals in his last game against Crystal Palace. Obviously, a left footed right winger, very creative, very direct as well, which is very good to see. To be honest, I think he could be rivaling Ziyech. Say it very quietly, but I do think that he might be a better player than Hakim Ziyech. Now, I know a lot of people won't like to hear that, but he really does have so much talent, and I really want to see him consistently training with the first team. I'm sure that Graham Potter liked what he saw. Right, now we're going to move into the less superficial ones, the less hypothetical ones. We're going to go into the players that truly impressed during the international break and are, and are already in the first team at Chelsea and could have an impact. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about is a player that I've been raving about ever since we signed him, and it's good to see him get consistent game time, and that is Carney Chuk or Mecca. Now, obviously, we signed him for a big money deal from Aston Villa this summer, completely out of nowhere. Very quickly, he's just an eight or a six. He can play in a double pivot, but best box to box. Very good going forward. Very nifty, despite his height. Technically superb. And really, you have to watch him to understand it because he does it absolutely all. He dribbles past players with ease. And this international break, it continued. Now, firstly, just before the international break, he was involved in that in-house game on the Saturday versus Brighton at the Amex Stadium. And he actually was the star of the show, coming on at half time for Dennis Zakaria and netting two goals under Graham Potter's watchful eye. He was on the sideline and he saw that happen firsthand. So that was already a brilliant start to the national break. And then he went off to the England under 20s to play in the Costa Colida Super Cup, which is just a series of friendlies, uh, but it was an international tournament for the England under 20s. He captained the England under 20s in the first game. In the second game, fellow Chelsea uh, common player Harvey Vale took over, but he captained him in the first game. He played the second game. And then after the third game, England under 20s lifted the Super Cup, another trophy for Carney Chukwemeka after winning the England under 19 euros in the summer and along with that he won the player of the tournament for this Costa Kalida Super Cup just now and along with this he won the player of the tournament at the under 19 euros coincidence I think not player of the tournament at the under 19 euros in the summer player of the tournament now for England under 20s won both tournaments as well this guy's a serial winner so talented anywhere just go look up his highlights you'll see it anywhere I really hope it's not just first team training now for the next few months he truly is integrated into minutes playing for Graham Potter's side he fits any of the eight roles in the midfield that Graham Potter wants to use and to be honest he'll fit any role you want to put him in because he's hungry and he wants to play get him into the team and give him some minutes Graham Potter and we're going to talk about another player that played in a youth side during the international break and we're going to talk about it very briefly it's Connor Gallagher he's playing for the England under 21s during the international break and he was actually very good for them but he wasn't exceptional he wasn't you know litting the stage alight. He did score one goal. He did win a penalty. But for me, he was always going to perform the England under-21s because he's much too good for that level. The important thing for me to see was him playing in a much more advanced position for England. And that's something that I noticed at Crystal Palace. I've noticed in his past low moves and hopefully Graham Potter notices it unlike Thomas Tuchel. That wasn't just a sly dig, but Tuchel was playing him as part of the double six. And hopefully Graham Potter realises that his real qualities come in the final third, obviously with him scoring in their last game. So the main takeaway I have from this international break, which we should have learned from his past seasons anyway, but Conor Gallagher is definitely a better, more useful player when utilised in the final third, attacking the box, making runs and scoring goals. The next player we're going to talk about is also going to be very brief, and that is Armando Broja. The reason for this is because actually, purely for the international break, he didn't have a ridiculously good international break. He didn't score a goal for Albania. But the reason I bring up Armando Broja is because there were reports at the beginning of the international break that Graham Potter is loving what he's seeing from Broja in training. Now, I always take these reports with a pinch of salt because I'm not really sure how these, these people know the opinions of a manager from training sessions but there's no doubt that when he came on against Dinamo Zagreb it was a really really positive spark with his pace obviously started that counter attack which Hakim Ziyech missed but it would have been a sure assist for Broja starting from our own box and ending up in their box it was a brilliant run for him it's something we keep seeing this season we've all been calling for Amanda Broja to start and that's purely on a merit basis because everyone else around him in that strike position at least has been very very poor and Broja deserved to start and off the reports the post has been impressed what he's seen off what we saw against Zagreb his pace his power and hopefully it translating into goals his directness his 1v1 ability scaring the opponents that Diego Costa about him I do hope that he's utilized more going forward in Graham Potter side he's not just reduced the bench appearances I want to see him get that start get that trust and playing under 
Graham Potter. The next player we're going to talk about is Matteo Kovacic. He had a very positive international break for Croatia, playing in both their games in this international break. He completed, I think, around 85 minutes and 75 minutes in both games, which is good and bad because it allows him to build up his fitness. However, it is still quite a lot of fitnesses, so it puts a bit of risk on him getting re injured. But hopefully, we are really, really tight with Kovacic. We don't let him get himself re injured because for me, he's our most important midfielder. And the reason I bring him up is because I've spoken about a couple of times before, but I do really see him filling that McAllister role at Brighton when Potter had a really fluid six in McAllister who was naturally a 10 dropping deep to pick up the ball as a deep line playmaker and then attacking the box now attacking the box maybe isn't Kovacic's best attribute but in terms of progressing the ball as a deep line playmaker and also having slightly more 1v1 ability and dribbles unlike McAllister I think he could really be used in that mobile six role so I just thought I'd drop that in here I do expect him to be used in that role going forwards under Graham Potter and if not he'll definitely be using the team because he is bloody Mateo Kovacic one of the best midfield in the world. Right, we're at the business end right now. I'm going to mention two players here, one briefly and one for a bit more time. The brief one I'm going to talk about is Mason Mount. Now, obviously, he didn't have the best international break, but that Germany game was a real eye-opener because he came on and made such a big impact. He's had a really lackluster season so far. No energy, just absolutely nothing exciting. Hasn't really done anything good so far this season, but he came on for England against Germany and scored almost immediately and changed the game. It wasn't just scoring his runs. He just looked so much more effective. He looked dangerous. Opponents were scared again to come up against Mason Mount and hopefully that is something we see translate into Graham Potter's side. He is so versatile he could literally be used in any role on the pitch and I wouldn't be surprised if we see him in each and every role in Graham Potter's system but hopefully as a general rule we see him as more of a midfielder as a central player as we saw in the Champions League game that Graham Potter was in charge of and hopefully he's attacking the box like he was for England and he's back to that old dangerous Mason Mount because his goals and assists as much as his performances and his tenacity his goals and assists are very important to the team so hopefully he can bring that back under Graham Potter. The last player we're going to talk about is Kai Havertz. Now it's obvious because we all saw his absolute masterclass at Wembley against England. He was absolutely brilliant. That goal was a masterpiece. It should be up in the Louvre. He literally got the ball from outside the box, finessed it top bins like it was FIFA, but it was an absolutely beautiful goal. And obviously he scored another one too, but that was a tap and he had a very good game. Now, the important thing about this game was not just the confidence of Kai Havertz, the beautiful goal, the strike that we haven't seen him do a single time at Chelsea. I don't think I've ever seen him shoot from outside the box and actually be successful. It's usually late runs in the box that gets him his success. So hopefully that is something we see more, but it was about the position that he adopted, a much deeper position than we seen at Chelsea so far. At Chelsea he's mainly be used as a main striker which is something he's talked about himself saying is not a natural position but I think it's clear now that he has to be used as a second striker or even as a 10 slightly deeper because picking up the ball in these pockets, moving the ball around, being fluid, dragging defenders and actually picking up the ball himself and dribbling and now hopefully this new striking ability that we saw against England with his new confidence is something that we can see flourish under Graham Potter. Graham Potter is an absolute tactician. He gets players in their best roles and gets the best out of them. The maximum output. You saw players like Leandro Trossard, Pascal Gross getting ridiculous numbers for their quality before Brighton. Hopefully that is something we see with Kai Havertz using a more optimal role, deeper role, freer role, one that he can actually express himself as the footballer he is rather than being limited as a number nine, which he isn't because he's much more tactically, technically elegant than that. So hopefully that is something we see manifest itself more and more under Graham Potter. So there you go. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Honestly, all in all, I'm just so happy to see Chelsea back as a new era under Graham Potter and finally he can get put into full flow before the World Cup in Qatar, which I already said I'm not excited for at all. But make sure to let me know in the comments who you think Adam Miles is going to have the most impact at Chelsea. And if you think someone who I haven't mentioned is going to have a huge impact after this international break, make sure to leave them in the comments. And once again, please like the video. It helps me so much. And obviously subscribe. And I will see you next time.